music researcher, and he's also a radio talk show host. And we always uh, find it very informative to have him on with us. Uh, he's on with us uh, for five minutes in the next hour. Then we have a top meteorologist on who's been accurately predicting these uh, frozen wasteland ice age winters. And he's getting the credit that is due. But the last two hours, uh, yeah, we've got birthers screaming during the reading of the Constitution that Obama isn't uh, natural born. We've got drones coming to Miami-Dade County. And we've got the big announcements uh, that they're building giant DARPA uh, face scanning camera centers everywhere and giant NSA databases. Just We've got announcements that the government's spying on all its employees right now with warrantless wiretaps. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's total evil being released as they try to break our will and condition us. But for the last two hours, I've been talking about Paul Joseph Watson's articles, Eco-Fascist Call for Prison Cities, and the other article uh, on the same similar subject, Planned Opolis, Elitist Agenda for Eco-Enslavement. Now, Alan Watt, I, I want to hear your expertise on this, but my basic boil down is this. There is an attempt to rebrand dystopia as mother's milk, to show children being murdered by their teachers and it being a good thing because they don't submit to the earth. Open announcements that we sh should just kill all people over 65, a Logan's Run carousel, London Guardian, you name it. I mean, they are saying we are Nazis. We are fascists. They are saying, yes, it's eugenics. Uh, they are just flaunting it. I guess to change the Overton window, to, to be so extreme that the sky is in the limit and somehow break our will. I believe it's backfiring on them, uh, but we are doing the search terms today, prison cities, eco-fascist, and prisonplanet.com. Eco-cities is number one search. Eco-fascist, number two search. Prisonplanet.com, number three search. Please make them all number one, number two, number three. Let's smash the enemy. You will decide which one is number one by how many times you put it into Google and then hit re-enter over and over again. But they are really coming out with the world government, with just all of it. Is it because alternative media has checkmated them or brought them into check, exposing their agenda and so stonewalling doesn't work? Or is it just simply to psychologically overwhelm us with the flaunting and it's all delivered in a gibbering, giggling uh, way uh, by these uh, psychopathic people uh, engaged in this uh, public uh, orgy uh, uh, as they prepare uh, for a, a mass uh, bloodthirsty feast. Uh, Alan Watt, what is your take on them going into warp drive, or do you agree they're going into warp drive? Well, they are, but uh, it's on plan. This is part of the agenda. They go by an educational timetable, and uh, they go by five-year plans for children uh, it will be five now, ten in a few years, and, and how they are going to uh, perceive their, their new world. They're, they're getting ready for it now. They're training them for it now to be quite normal. And so this is just the educational part. Uh, it's time to implement this stage of the agenda. They know uh, exactly how much to push, of course, because they've already prepared us all uh, for the present agenda. And we accept it. We're always prepared in advance for everything that comes along, mainly through little bits and bytes of information from scientific expos on, on the media. And uh, we also get it through all fiction. All fiction has it in it now, that the coming uh, it's a system you have to live into. And for more well, 30 years now, sci-fi has been pouring out this dystopic future with uh, a small uh, group elite running the world, a scientific elite, of course, always a scientific elite who are in charge of all food rationing and so on, who live a very good life, by the way. And then there's the ones, the masses, who are still working for them in their closed cities where they're dependent upon the, their masters for everything as long as they toe the line. And uh, China actually has those closed cities for their worker drones who are even locked in their neighborhoods at night. Meanwhile, the globalists are doing everything they can to shut off the resources while telling us that it's naturally happening. But then we have all their own manuals uh, admitting it. Uh, please continue. Yeah, and it's all done by stages where they introduce new crisis as crisis after crisis and uh, you think about life before 9-11 happened it was fairly uh, fairly static to an extent uh, and that no major changes drastic changes are, are not certainly not a whole bunch of them all at once and since 9-11 it's been crisis after crisis after crisis and that this is the technique of a revolution it's their revolution not ours and they're bringing the last phase into to, to being. And this phase, of course, will last up to about the year 2050 or so. 
as they drastically reduce the population, uh, again, through food rationing. But this is not new because the United Nations was set up, really, to help coordinate all of this. You need a, you need a massive... Well, the British 200 years ago there. developed the reservation concentration camp model, and then it was used on the Native Americans, and then we have the British manuals that are in the Library of Congress, how to give them the smallpox blankets, how to open the wounds of the soldiers Malthus, onto it. Malthus put uh, out uh, lots of instruction booklets, educational booklets for the British Empire, how to run their colonies, how to keep uh, peasants at, at a working uh, level, but not too bright, too strong to walk off at night or run away. And so they had, they had the whole diet scheme figured out. That's why diet is very important to it. And that's why rationing is coming in uh, to help us get to that stage. Strong enough to be kind of uh, um, pliable and workable, but not too smart enough to do anything about it. And this is all part of it, too. So that was introduced into the British Commonwealth. That's right. They have manuals on how omnivores are less aggressive when they're mainly on the vegetarian diet but that were designed and triggered under especially a red meat diet uh, with the hormonal endocrine interfaces to become more predatory and aggressive. They don't want that for us. They want us docile, uh, grass-eating uh, creatures for them to more easily roll over us. Oh, yeah, and they talked, uh, when Britain went to India, they talked uh, an awful lot with the Brahmins, very interested in their culture, because the Brahmins had kept that very system uh, working in India for thousands of years. And so the people were taught a religion that made them vegetarian. And, uh, and you can also restrict, of course, even what you give them for a vegetarian, which makes them even more um, pliable and not too bright. Uh, they go down to a perfect science. They know everything that you need to eat to keep you bright and healthy. And well, so that's on. right. The anthropology and archaeology and biology shows that the brain, CC-wise, begins to grow even larger with even just a few generations on a red meat diet because it has the fats and oils needed uh, for brain development. Well, the British, they don't, the British soldiers in World War I, uh, they, they were never fed properly before they became soldiers. Uh, they came from all walks of life, generally the industrial towns and cities where meat was pretty expensive, very expensive and very scarce for them. And within the first, they found within the first, uh, the average recruit was five foot three, by the way, uh, at the age of uh, 16, 17, 18. And uh, within three months of getting a high protein and meat diet, he would sprout between three and six inches. And that's how starved they were. So all this had been tested out on populations before, including Britain. Yeah. And they had to give them meat, though, to get them ready to kill, because the That's Germans right. were gobbling meat and understood that. It's all scientific. So, so right now, they're really rushing all this out. It's been accelerating since the staged event of 9-11, but in the last year, it's like they put the afterburners on. I mean, they are just out in mainline news saying, we're going to kill you at 65. They're not even denying death panels now. They're saying, we're going to kill you. I mean, we are oh, yeah. murderers. They are saying, we are murderers. Yeah, you've had uh, write-ups in the British papers. Again, Britain is the flagship for the world to follow, remember. And they're, they're talking about putting up uh, euthanasia booths at street corners, very much like you saw in Silent Green, where you just get rolled in. You some classic... Or movie. children of men. They're getting us all ready for the suicide. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's a scientific uh, dictatorship. Uh, uh, this was all promoted by Bertrand Russell, who, who helped set up the system we're living through now. He was a big promoter. He attended all the think tanks, put forward lots of ideas along with Aldous Huxley and uh, his brother Julian Huxley from the United Nations UNESCO. And uh, they talked about, they had it all planned out for this phase that we're going through now, how the society would be turned into a, um, a society where there'd be very little marriage at all, uh, massive prom promiscuity, but very little births. And uh, that, that was supposed to be encouraged. Of course, they've done that. They've been successful with all of that. And everyone's divided now. No one's got a family to stand up for them anymore. So government is the boss. And so now they can just rampage ahead with all the... That's rest right. The That's why the Romans had to build that wall in central England, because they could never conquer the Scots. The only group that they could never conquer, because they were so family, tribal-oriented, kind of like Afghans, they would die before they did it. Uh, but now the Scots have been brought to heel quite nicely. Oh, yeah. Again, through their diets, uh, again... Uh, they were ruled by London for a few hundred years, still are. And again, too, we've got to understand that the basic premise as well from all of this is how they pick the leaders of countries and those who are the, the politicians who are st still lower level, but they're higher level than, than we will generally see. Um, they are, Scotland's a very Masonic country. You couldn't get a job in Scotland 
they would pay you any kind of money unless you were a Freemason. And it's the same thing in this system, too. The, the, the higher Freemasons are picked out at university level, especially Ivy League. And if, they're, if you're an operative Mason, that means that you must attend every meeting when you're called, like it be three in the morning, whenever, to show you're very eager. And that's how they pick the future prime ministers, etc., and politicians, the ones who will get up and be an operative Mason, do what they're told, never ask why. And never ask the, the, the consequences of, of their actions. Yeah, all the modern presidents, prime ministers, MI5, MI6, CIA, Sarkozy in France, all of them, yep. uh, Vladimir Putin, they're just all secret society agents. Yes, and they must prove their worth. That's the whole case with it. They've got to be eager. They've got to show that they can go to parties and not get too drunk. They must not be loose-lipped uh, because they're monitored more than anyone else. You see, the system is based uh, in, in a more... On the, the Soviet system and uh, a hyper-Soviet system, uh, they've announced in, in the, the declassified records of Russia uh, that there was so many dossiers on all the bureaucrats working for the Soviet system, way more than the average person, the, the pro at the bottom, because they had to make sure that those are the ones, just like George Orwell showed you in 1984, those are the ones who, who must be gung-ho and always put on the good face for the party, believe in the party, that kind of thing. And their, their telephone calls, everything was monitored. Stay there. We've had a bomb go off. We told you the feds were getting ready to start detonating those all over. I will be right back.